So following the path, it talks about uh, how to cut down these trees. They call it boxing the pines. It says, uh, to box the pine, the worker removes the strip of bark using a scraper or a hatchet, resin with the seat from the tree, and follow into the box, which was then emptied seven or eight times a year. Eventually, the tree became f fuel and tar kiln. Remains of the historic tar kiln are visible farther along the trail. Okay, the myth at the time, the, the, the myth at the time of the American Revolution, this was untouched wilderness. The reality, these forests showed signs of thriving industry that supported international fleets of sailing ships. This is a sample box pine partially stripped to drain resin for turpentine. In colonial times, for many reasons, for many years after, box pines were a common sight here and throughout the coastal forest. In a relatively pristine woods, people are still discovering boxed pines from the area. So here is one. You can kind of see at the bottom, I guess, where it's cut out there. Yeah, and there's, a, I guess, that's live oak. Something that looks like it would make you itch. That's pretty neat. So we hope you enjoyed our tour of the Tar Heel Trail. Um, there's, I think, one more sign to see. And when you're walking this way, you are definitely can tell you're walking back to the visitor center. This trail's only 0.3 miles. And this is one of the roads back there where you enter into the main entrance. Uh, one last thing, it says Tar Kiln. This quiet mound of earth gives no, inkling of, gives no inkling of the smoldering pungent operation that occurred within. Here colonial workers extract tar for pine logs to waterproof ropes rigging and to coat and chalk ship, coat and caulk ship's hulls. Because of tar kindling could be used only once. Thousands of them scattered throughout the forest in the coastal scattered throughout the coastal forest. People who live and play in these modern woods have no idea of the mounds of, of historic function. What they're talking about is this right here. You can see that's kind of the edge. This hump right here. Said so this tar this tar kiln is preserved as a reminder of when Longleaf Pine Forest made 1800th century. North Carolina, a world leader in the production of naval stores, tar, pitch, and rosin. Workers first built a round platform where they stacked and fired tar-rich cores of longleaf pines. Heated release the tar, which drained into barrels, and the interior construction was intricate. The kiln had to be built precisely, or gases would build up and cause an explosion. Packed earth formed the interior, the exterior of the kiln. You can kind of see. There's the whole private vent, and then loading it up to carts with horses, and then it coming out right there. That's amazing. I'm not sure who is having more fun, me making this video or you watching it. So you can kind of see it goes from there all the way to about right there. There's the mound right there. And let's go walk over there and see it. Sorry about the leaf crunching. You can almost see an indentation in the grass still. Right there. The ghosts of an industry. The change in forest says it all. Longleaf pines are now rare in this area, although the naval stores industry thrived throughout well into the 19th century. As it was doomed as, as soon as the first ironclad ships were put to sea, pine tar from longleaf pines were no longer needed. To treat ship's holes, faster growing loblolly pines fed the virgin pulp and the lumber industries and began to dominate the coastal forests. Along the show you may notice several stands of young longleaf pine seedlings. The National Park Service is playing them to provide a window on the colonial economy and to more accurately depict the battlefield landscape. Gradually the forest will begin to resemble the scene where the patriots labeled, labored and fought. So that's what the longleaf pine seedlings look like. And that's what the old ships used to look like. This is a steel uh, steel hold, USS Trenton in 1878. And as you, there's the beautiful red, white, and blue as you enter the park, into the parking lot. And then the trail kind of just wraps around and dumps back into the parking lot here. So we're going to leave the camera on as we leave the, uh, the park here. It's a real nice hill surrounded by all kinds of uh, pine trees. 
this is really, really, I don't know who, up, who takes care of this park, but they really do a phenomenal job. So really the only uh, last thing to see is uh, Patriots Hall picnic area to the left here and uh, this is on the way out of the park so we'll go check that out real quick and that'll wrap up our tour so welcome to the uh, picnic area this is the last stop I had to show everybody this tree look at this thing it's got to be one of the coolest trees I've ever seen it's just a pine tree that just has totally been looped around and probably damaged from storms there's a huge uh, sheltered picnic area over there with a roof and looks like probably close to a dozen tables See you later, cool tree. And then there's uh, obviously a big field kind of for playing around and doing their thing. And there is the main picnic area. I'll show you that in just one second. There is a uh, pretty informative sign up here. Man, that tree was cool. Uh, it says, welcome to the picnic area. It's first come, first serve. Uh, but no one group or family may use this entire shelter. Grills, cookers, and vehicles must remain in the parking area. No roller skates, skateboards, etc. Noise must be kept to a level that's not disturbing other. Thank you. So, welcome to the uh, picnic area. You can see this is this is big. There's uh, one, two, three, four garage doors. And it talks about the battlefield. We already showed you this with the, uh, the map. Some of the monuments and kind of some history. There are some restrooms here. Talks about... This was flooded back in 1999 from Hurricane Floyd. Be aware of your surroundings. <laughs> there are mosquitoes. There are plenty of ticks. There are triggers. There are bees and there are fire ants. And that about wraps it up. I don't know if you can see inside here. It's a huge area. Ceiling fans, PA system, flags. I'm sure you can rent this out. Bunch of picnic tables. Grill. Several areas for a fire. And, as you will see, a few more picnic tables. And over there. And then the uh, road on the way out. A real nice field to play in. That's it, everybody. We hope you enjoyed our tour of the Morris Creek Battlefield. There's the, uh, the exit on the way out. Picnic tables are behind us. And the uh, visitor center is to the right, now behind us. And, uh... There is the exit to the park and Highway 210. We truly appreciate you watching our video. We hope you learned a lot about American history, Morris Creek Battlefield, North Carolina, and your fight for freedom. Come check this out sometime. Thanks for watching AntlerDreamer.com on YouTube, and don't forget to check out our website, www.AntlerDreamer.com.